Welcome uh, to the introduction to 3P uh, that we're filming for GIMP Academy. Uh, we're uh, at Qualys Health in Seattle and we're going to look at how we're going to look at the 3P process in several different modules. This first one is on the introduction of 3P. Now first of all, what is 3P? Because we use a lot of different acronyms in Lean and other processes. It's Production Preparation Process. And one of the things you'll see in healthcare is that it's interchangeably used with 2P. Sometimes they drop the production portion, they just call it preparation process. Either way, if it's 2P or 3P, we actually talk about the same thing. Very similar than when we say 5S and 6S in our system. It's the same thing that we're looking at. But what we're looking at is the overall lean design approach of trying to do rapid testing of ideas and trying to embed lean principles into the process and into workplace design. This works equally well when you're trying to design a product designing a manufacturing line, and what we're learning now when you design clinics and hospitals. Where can you embed this lean principles in before you start? And how can that work? So we started taking what we learned in manufacturing and try to apply it to healthcare and see what happens. Now, first of all, what is our target in 3P? 3P is providing from day one, when you open the doors of implementation, 100% quality of care, flowing with no waste in a safe and effective manner. What do you think of that goal? Pretty good goal? Okay. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. May not be probable, but it is definitely possible. But that's what our target is. We want day one not to have waste in our process. So how do we do that? And 3P helps us along those lines to do that. It's really one of the most powerful things that we have in the lean uh, business applications but it's usually reserved for companies that know a little bit about lean. It's rather difficult to apply this to a company brand new to lean because there's so many things about lean you need to understand to try to apply it. If you're still trying to figure out 5S and you're trying to put 3P on top of it, you're going to have a hard, difficult journey to do it. It's not that it's impossible, it's just going to be a big struggle. It's usually when you have a better understanding of lean, you can apply it into the lean design. So usually this is reserved for people who have a little bit better knowledge of Lean, but I don't say that you can't do it, because as we know in Lean, there's a lot of things you can do if you apply yourself. Now, when do you use 3P? Well, if you've got a change in demand, or if you have a new process or product that you're releasing, or in our case, if you're building any new structure, like building a new wing, or building a new clinic, or building a new hospital, or building a new plant if you look at manufacturing, or upgrading or changing an equipment. When you have a major shift in something of the way you do things, it's a great opportunity to apply the 3P approach. Now, when you go through the Kaizen approach, for those of you who've been on the journey, there's a lot of things that we try to do to succeed to make improvements. We have things like Kaizen, continuous improvement. And typically, continuous improvement or Kaizen is small, gradual improvements over time. So you're trying to improve daily. So you've heard that everybody every day to improve. So you're going to get gradual improvements. But what we will say is that you need a little bit more to, along your lean journey than just improvements every day. You need like a radical, revolutionary type jolt to improve, to give you a jump up. And what we end up doing is saying that 3P helps you in that process. You need that radical movement, that radical jump up, instead of just normal Kaizen. So how are you gonna learn? Well, just like in most things, you're gonna learn by moonshining, another new topic you may not be familiar with in the lean world and by tri-storming, that's what we do in Lean. And through those two processes that we're gonna introduce here, we're gonna to try to improve our de Lean design before we get into a new hospital. <clears throat> now some of the goals that we look at in 3P are patient safety. We know that's important, correct? So everybody should have goals or metrics driven toward lean, or, uh, patient safety. Patient satisfaction, how well was the experience in the healthcare facility? Employee staff satisfaction is also important, that we look at that as one of the metrics. How much time we spend with the patient, our productivity, uh, what is our space utilization, how flexible we are in our design, how kind, what kind of healing environment that we have, and of course, let's look at the green approach, how much energy we're using in the, in the process. So you should establish these metrics, or metrics along these lines, of what you want to measure your process, where it is today, and where you want it to be in the future. One of the other goals in 3P that I try to stress is that we want to think differently. It's not important just to take your process improvements and make small improvements. Think big improvements. Think major change. Think out of the box. Think differently of how you apply things. 3P gives you the platform to allow you to do that. Now, some of the benefits that we have, just like in regular Kaizen events, you have a cross-functional team. 
So we want to make sure people that, who don't normally talk to each other in the process flow will be working together side by side. Rapid testing of ideas, that's usually in a week or two to test out ideas, and then embed those lean principles right into the design process. That's what we're trying to do with this. Now, this is just a quick summary of some of the lean thinking principles we want to embed with the 3P. Uh, what is the value? We should understand what the value and the value streams are, especially patient value. Um, also look at flow, and we'll talk about the seven flows uh, this morning or this afternoon. And then we'll talk about pull, the pull systems that we want to do, and then perfection. And that's usually the hardest one that I found that most people wrestle with. Because when we say pursue perfection through continuous improvement, most people get hung up on the perfection part. Now, perfection, if you look at perfection, how often can we be perfect? We're human. How often can we be perfect? Never. Never. But I would argue we could be perfect probably in a moment of time or through one cycle. But we have moments of perfection. But we, then we have the gaps between those moments through the process. And the key here is not that we're actually going to be perfect all the time, but we're constantly pursuing perfection. So the key word is pursue. Our goal is to always look for and to try to achieve perfection versus actually attaining it in itself. So our challenge, especially in a 3P approach, is we want to avoid replicating the status quo, only bigger. Normally when you have a new design, especially with a hospital, and you get people to get together for the functional design, say this is what the hospital should look like, they come up with the exact same processes, the exact same functions, only bigger. Would that be true? Does that make sense? Okay, that happens a lot of times. Because people say the systems are okay, they're not perfect, but I just need more space. How many of you heard that? I can't find things, I need more space, things are cluttered, things are in the hallways, uh, processes aren't flowing. So their answer right off, obviously, is give me more space and things will flow better. Well, I would say no. Let's look at what space you have and let's look at the flow first and then decide from the processes what space you need. And we'll show some examples where that makes perfect sense as you look through the process. Now, why not do it the conventional way, the traditional way of designing? Well, typically problems get overlooked because, again, you're looking at status quo. It's usually small groups are involved in it. Normally, you don't talk to a lot of different people. It's usually a leadership core team that's established the functions of what we need. Uh, so the OR needs to be so many uh, theaters or bays, and then we have so many beds, and we need this much storage. They sign off on it, and then they pass it on to the next group. So it's usually a small group of people talking about it. When we do the 3P approach, we want to expand the number of people involved in the designing of the processes, especially people who are working in the processes. So that's what we want, more input for more people. And that's usually higher costs. Higher costs come in things like overruns, uh, design changes, uh, things that happen throughout the process. And before you know it, you've uh, almost doubled the cost that you initially thought the design would be. So we want to avoid that kind of process. So in the traditional approach, we usually look at the, existi the existing operation, the existing uh, processes, and we just try to tweak it a little bit. And it's usually internally driven. So each internal function fights over the turf that they want. All right, so if the hospital's gonna be only so many square feet, if I'm in the uh, NICU unit, I'm gonna make sure I get my space. I don't worry so much about the rest of the hospital. We wanna make sure our department gets our space. And the rest of the departments do the same thing. We wanna try to avoid those situations. Because that is pretty much the silo thinking. Each department's out for their own. And they only look at their own process. Through the cross-functional teams, we want to change that and say, look at the full value stream, the full patient flow. <coughs> and then look at the patient experience. Uh, the first time we did this and looked at the processes, it was pretty natural for the nurses and the doctors to tell what affected them in their job. Not many times did we talk about the patient. So when we did the next time, we said the only thing we're considering is the patient flow. So everything was focused on the patient. Traditionally, we don't look at the patient that often or that closely. In the 3P, we want to focus on it, be patient-centered. So the silo approach is the hospital leadership will do their work, throw the design over the wall with the functional requirements. The architects will sit in their firm, come up with design alternatives, go through several different reviews of it. When they're done, they throw it over the brick wall to the builders, and then they build it. The process also takes a long time. How long does it take for a hospital to get from idea to open? Years. years. Five years? Six years? Now, when the 3P process first came out in manufacturing, it was geared toward how long it took from when you had an idea to build a car to when the car was sold. And it would take three to five years. And the goals were, how can we release from an idea to a car in two years? 
So they wanted to crash the time down for the lead time in half. Now what we want to aspire to in lean healthcare is try to take the design ideas of a hospital and reduce that time. So it doesn't take five years to build a new hospital. It would take two and a half years or two years. So we want to cut that time in half. We want the team approach. Everybody working up front early together. So in our process, we have the architects working. We have representatives from the builders. We have hospital staff. We have patients involved. Everybody's involved in designing the process as a team before we go forward. Now, I have to tell you this, it's a pretty difficult job to get all those people together and agreeing. It's a pretty difficult job to get all this detailed data because people just want to take the design and go. They think that's fast. But the lean approach is to study this, the process first in detail and study it and study it and study it, then act. So we don't want to just act right away. We tend to want to act right away. So this process is kind of lengthy, you would think. But once we get it settled, we've solved so many issues before we started construction. Once construction happens, it should be a breeze. And we should have prevented a lot of problems that uh, would have been there if we didn't do this process. So that's what we're trying to do. So our quest, really, is not just to design a new hospital. We are really the architects of our future. We have in our hands the power to change things. So our mission, really, is to fundamentally reinvent how we're caring for our patients. We want that healthcare experience, including patients, physicians, and staff, and we want breakthrough results. We don't want just incremental improvement. So we want to set the bar very high with what we want to try to do with 3P, not just design a new hospital. We want it to really provide a thrilling breakthrough experience for the patient and have a process flow that's bar none better than we've ever had before. One of the things you need to also think about, very similar to manufacturing, is once you design the hospital, once you get the bricks going and you get the building built, 80 to 90 percent of your year-to-year -year operational costs are set. You can kaizen the heck out of it, you can kaizen left and right, but you're only probably going to get about 10, 20 percent of really good improvement. Now you probably could get a little bit more, but sometimes you'll get stuck with now I've got to change the building. There's more structure change I've got to take. But simple kaizen won't get you there. Now you're talking about building structure changes. So it's really important to look at what that building will give you in flow before you even build it, because it's really inexpensive to change it on a drawing than it is once it's built. So the main key here is that we want to fix the processes first, then look at the space. And that's how we're going to approach it in 3P.